All right, so in this second part, we're gonna find the max shear and the max bending moment. So what we can do is find our important shear values. And in particular, we need to find where the shear is equal to zero. And that will be at the same point where our bending moment will be the max. We'll find our max bending moment where our shear is equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to draw our shear and bending moment diagrams. So we have our shear force diagram, the positive and negative side, and our bending moment diagram, positive and negative side. All right, so what we can do is we can find our important shear values. So straight away, we can see that we have a positive 8.75 kilonewtons going up. We have 8.75 kilonewtons. And this will remain unchanged until we reach our one meter point. So we reach our one meter point. This is still 8.75 kilonewtons. So the next part, we have this increasing distributed load. So we're gonna have like a curved line, kind of like this. And we need to find this point here, but we don't know any of these values and we don't know this distance. And that's what we need to find out. So what we need to do is develop our shear and moment functions. So our shear moments as functions of X and X is the distance. So what we can do is we can cut the beam and we can redraw this section of the beam and analyze this beam. So let's redraw the beam. We have a pin, we cut the beam. So we have a distributed load going down. So this distance is one meter and this distance we'll call X1. And then we have our reaction, which is 8.75 kilonewtons. Then we can draw our shear, we call it V1, and that will be in the negative direction. And then we can draw our moment in the positive direction and we'll call that M1. So let's write our shear as a function of x1. So we have a negative shear, negative shear v1 going down. So we can write it in here, negative v1. So just remember you can draw these values in the positive or negative direction, it doesn't matter. Um, it's up to you, it's up to you what you wanna do. I just like to draw my shear in the negative and my moment in the positive. I have a negative V1 and then I have a positive 8.75 kilonewtons going up. So plus 8.75 kilonewtons. We have this distributed load acting down. So the tricky part with this question is we don't know what this point is. We don't know because we haven't defined X. So at this point will be dependent on our X1 value. And we haven't defined it. What we need to do is we need to define it as a function of X1. So let's redraw our triangle. So we're looking at this triangle here and the triangle on our beam. So let's redraw this triangle. We know that this point is 15 kilonewtons per meter and this point will be zero. And we're trying to find, we're trying to find a point here. So this point, we don't know. We don't know this point. And this distance is X1. And the total distance up to this point, right? Our total distance of our triangle is 3.5 meters. We understand that. And we also understand that the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. And that will be the area. We can use similar triangles to find this point. And this point, we'll call it H. This point will be H. So let's find our H value. So we can write zero minus 15 divided by zero minus 3.5. And that will be equal to zero minus H divided by, we go zero again, zero minus X1. Our H value is 4.285 X1. So we'll just round that, we'll round that to 4.3. X1, just to make it easier. So we can plug this into here. And our B, our B we already know is X1. So we're left with one over two, X1 multiplied by 4.3, X1 is equal to A. So this area will be our total force from our triangle. So if we get rid of all of this, this is acting down, so it will be negative 2.15 X1 squared. And this will be equal to zero. So we have V1 is equal to 8.75 kilonewtons minus 2.15 X1 squared kilonewtons. So that is our V1. And then we can write our moment. Our moment is a function of X1. So we have our positive moment around our cut point. 
So we can write positive M1. We have a negative moment acting in this direction from our 8.75. So we can write negative 8.75 kilonewtons multiplied by this distance. So that distance is one plus X1 meters. Then we have our moment from our triangular force acting in this direction, in the positive direction. So where is that moment acting? So if we draw our triangle again, our moment or the centroid of the force or the triangle is one third. So this distance is one over three. So the force will act one third from this side of the triangle. And we know that our distance is x1. So this distance is what we're concerned about. And this distance will be x1 over three. And our moment is acting in the positive direction. So we can write positive 2.15 x1 squared kilonewtons multiplied by x1 over three. And all of this will be equal to zero. So if we solve for m1, this will be our moment. So now we can find any shear or moment along our x1. So here we need to consider this point to be zero meters and this point to be 3.5 meters. So let's plug in zero meters into our shear equation. So if we plug in zero meters here, this will cancel out and we're left with 8.75 kilonewtons, which is what we have here, which is what we have here, 8.75 kilonewtons. So let's plug in 3.5 meters and let's see what we get. So if we plug in 3.5 meters here, we're left with negative 17.58 kilonewtons which is very close to our by value. And it's probably the difference is just because we rounded the numbers, but we're left with 17.5. So let's use, we can use 17.5 here. So we'll find a point, there'll be a point roughly here, which will be negative 17.5 kilonewtons. And then this will won't change and then we'll finish at zero at the end. So this will be joined by a curve, by some kind of curve here. But we don't know this distance, but we can find it if we set our shear value to zero. So if we set our shear to zero, we can find it. Let's rewrite our shear equation here, but our V1, we're going to say is equal to zero. So we can write zero is equal to 8.75 minus 2.15 times x1 squared. So if we solve for x1, it will be equal to 2.02 meters, roughly 2.02 meters. So at this point, this will be 2.02 meters. And we already know this distance is one meter. This distance, we know is 0.5 meters. This distance must be 1.48 meters. Now we found the point at where our shear value is zero. And that will correlate, that will be the same point, this same point here will be our maximum bending moment. So max, our max moment. We'll have a curve that looks something like this. We can find any of these points, but let's find our max moment. So we know our distance is 2.02 meters, 2.02 meters. So let's just plug this into our moment. Anywhere where there's an X1, we can plug in 2.02 meters. So if we do that, so we'll find our M as a function of 2.02 meters will be equal to 20.5 kilonewton meters. So this point, if we go back to our beam, this point will be 20.5 kilonewton meters. So now we found our maximum moment and we found our maximum shear as well, it will be 17.5 kilonewtons.